presenting and presented an abstract for a contributed talk. And please go on. He's speaking about uh, plasmids in Qatar, so very fascinating. Um, please go on. You have 15 minutes. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon. So thank you. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to, to give a, a short presentation of my work. So uh, the title is about Capsiella Genomic Epidemiology. So uh, yeah, about some of the data that we generated in Qatar. So recently I have relocated from Qatar to uh, Singapore. So now it's the midnight here in the Southeast Asia. So I'm going to talk about um, um, some of the results um, study generated by some of the junior physician when I was working in Qatar in the Sidra, uh, uh, in, uh, in Qatar. So at the moment, I, 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 I joined um, Tan Tok Singh Hospital and I am the um, principal scientific officer in the National Center for Infectious Disease. But the data presented is uh, related to my work, previous work in Qatar. So uh, before um, presenting the story, I, um, all this data, I would want to acknowledge all the scientists and physicians and so the or the, uh, some of the collaborators involved in the data discussions um, from Hamad uh, Medical Corporation, uh, University of Pittsburgh, and also uh, University of Melbourne. Thank you for um, Kat and also Kelly's in, um, discussion and su suggestion. So um, the story began with um, a, a small molecular epidemiology study to look at the um, general, the molecular epidemiology of capapenemase um, producing um, enterobatiades. Um, some of the study, uh, there's a, there was study published last year on the epidemiology of the uh, CRE um, circulating in Qatar. So based on the statistics, we learned that uh, Capsiella pneumoniae was the most uh, prevalent or most common uh, bacteria and carrying the capapenemase in Qatar. Um, and so you can see from this um, table indicating based on like 150 isolates we collected, almost 80 of the isolates belong to Capsiella. And then um, also 48 and also the MDMs are the most common capapenemase circulating in the countries. And so, and KVC is very rare in that part of the world in the Middle East regions. So we decided to look into the genetic uh, context of all these uh, capapenemase producing uh, capsiella. So the idea, just trying to look at the to do whole genome sequencing of the capapenemase producing capsiella, uh, we cover from all these clinical samples, basically from blood, from urine, and different contact from the patients. And then we're trying to understand the uh, the mechanisms and uh, how, uh, yeah, just how these bacteria become resistant to capapenemase. So yeah, we we did whole genome sequencing. So and this is a very general protocol. So. Uh, I think it's pretty similar. I think pretty standardized among different parts of the world. Um, so we use uh, Illumina next seed, and then we use a standard types pipe pipeline just to look at the to assemble the genome, and then to call the variants, and then to um, to search database for all the AML genes, and also we look for uh, the prevalence genes as well using a software developed uh, by Cat Host Group in Melbourne. Now he's in UK. Uh, now she's in UK. Uh, so, and this is the, uh, one of the summary diagram just to to illustrate um, the epidemiology uh, of all genomic epidemiology of all these um, Capsiella isolate, mostly Capsiella pneumoniae and also Capsiella quasi pneumoniae. So this tree just shows you the composition, the presence or absence of AML genes in blue, and also the presence or absence of virulence genes. Um, so you can see from this tree, um, um, the most prevalent ST types, uh, straight sequence type in Capsiella are ST147 and also ST231. And um, Capsiella quasi-pneumonia is very homogeneous. So there's two dominant um, 
sequence type ST196 and um, 1416. Um, we're particularly interested in um, the ST383 because all these isolates, we have only four isolates belongs to ST383, but they both, uh, they carry both NDM and OXA48. And at the same time, in terms of the presence or absence of virulent genes, those um, isolates belong to ST383. They also carry the RMPA and also the aerobatin, which is uh, very important virulence factors in terms of uh, forming mucoids and causing infections in Capsiella. So um, we decided to go deeper to look at the, um, um, uh, the genomic composition of all these ST383. So then we pick up one of the isolates uh, belonging to ST383, and then we did a uh, we sequenced again using short read and also long read by mid iron. We did hybrid assembly. So after a hybrid assembly, so we find um, the sample contain one chromosomal DNA and plus five plasmid, including an INC uh, HI1B and also an I uh, Embricon L. So uh, what's interesting is uh, we find that the NDM5 gene plus eight um, other major AMR genes such as CDMX, uh, CDXM15 and OXA9 they, and extraxa, they are located on the, um, the first pass meet, the, uh, the HI1B. And then the OXA48 plus the CM, CDM, uh, CDXM14, they are located on the INCL. Plasmid. And then we did a blast search of all these, uh, plus, these two major plasmids. And then uh, we find it is highly similar to another um, ST383 reported in UK just like last year. So uh, one of the, the first, the largest plasmid, it is like a hybrid plasmid. It contains both AMR gene and also the wavelength genes. So this is just a diagram to, to show the genomic comparison between the, um, the plasmid of FQ61 and also the plasmid um, belonging to an isolate, isolate in UK. So you can see there's lots of uh, conserved region. Um, so basically I, I, we can di di dissect the, uh, the, the, um, the plasmid into three major regions. So I call it the AML one region, which basically contain most of the uh, AMR genes, such as NDM5 and also and CDXM15. And for in this AMR1 region, it's basically over 99.9% .9 identical between our plasmid with, to the UK plasmid um, in that particular region. And also in terms of the virulence region, also it's almost eight, over 90% identical in terms of sequence identity, as you can see even the arrangement of the equivalence genes in purple, they are also in synteny with each other. So the major differences between our plasmid uh, with the UK uh, is only in the, what we call the AML2 region, which contain around six, um, seven AML genes. There, there, there's some sort of recombination and rearrangement happening um, here, just that if spheroids, there's some sort of rearrangement uh, uh, between when we do the comparison is very obvious. Um, so then we kind of know that like our, our isolate, um, our Capsiella uh, ST383 is quite, the first plasmid, the biggest plasmid is very similar to the one actually reported from UK. Well, and also we did the comparison um, to of the second largest plasmid of our isolate two to the UK, to the one from UK, is almost 90, over 99.9%, 6% identical between the two. So I would say also almost the same. There's only like a couple of mutation uh, between and uh, between among the two plasmids. And then on this plasmid, they carry uh, the uh, OXA48 and also the CDXM14 gene plus like two additional AMR genes. So, and this plasmid uh, is like carrying the OXA48. It was first reported in Australia around 2013, but it's 
like if you look at we when we did blast search like there are multiple hits and then um, this plasmid actually uh, was carried by um, different st types of capsiella pneumonia and also e coli and also proteus so it's been widely circulated in different countries and since uh, i think since 2013 Um, what's interesting is what, what we're trying to look at all what um, we try to compare the um, the available genomes of all the ST383 in the gene bank and trying to look at the evolution of this um, this ST type of capsular pneumonia over time and then we discover something very interesting so most of the uh, caps uh, most of, of the apps ST383 they were uh, first reported from Greece, and mostly they carry VIM or also CM um, or KPC uh, and um, or CMY, uh, this kind of beta lactamase. It's only until recently that um, um, this uh, ST type pick up different plasmids. So um, if you look at the tree based on similarity, I mean, this is tree generated just by mesh. It's based on um, genome uh, percentage similarity. It's not based on evolution, just the distance matrix. So, uh, but just look at how similar they are. I mean, uh, we have four isolates from Qatar belonging to ST383, and then there was one isolate from England. Also, uh, in terms of the virulence genes and also the AMR genes, um, all these isolates, recent isolates, in, in addition to two Lebanon isolates, they both carry um, the uh, uh, the NDM and also the OXA48. Uh, and also they, because of the presence of the hybrid uh, plasmid, which in addition to NDM and OXA, they also carry some of the virulent uh, genes like IMP, which is make it odd could be potentially considered to be a hypervivalent uh, capsilla. So it's in addition to multi-drug resistant, it also is hypervivalent. So let's make this um, ST383 kind of interesting based on the comparison of all this data. So after all the comparison, and we are going to compare more because I think there are lots of reads in, in the gene bank that we can uh, curate and then trying to see maybe there's a bigger connection of um, ST383 in the gene bank, and then trying to look for the evolution of all this sequence type. So th this is a small scenario. So I think based on the literature, we know that the ST383 was reported in Greece the first time, uh, in Greece in, in 2009, and then it harbored WIM and KBC and CMY. But then there was in, uh, I think since 2015, uh, there was um, a report from Germany, um, um, this, uh, that's the ST383 pick up OXA48 plasmid and it's been circulating around. And there are lots of isolates actually reported in China also con uh, containing OXA48 belonging to ST383. And then recently in the Middle East region in Lebanon and UK, and also I think there's an informal report from uh, UAE in Dubai also um, having ST383 bearing um, in addition to the OXA48 plasmid, it also bear that hybrid plasmid contain both AMR genes and also virulent genes. So I think it's worrying the fact that like there's a spread, like there's an acquisition of um, carbapenemase producing uh, bearing plasmid and also the, uh, the, uh, the plasmid um, with hybrid containing multiple hypervivalence genes. So this is one, one of the uh, interesting findings from our comparison. Uh, another just trying to, uh, an ongoing study is because uh, we're trying to, uh, what we are looking at is the, there's like the, the, the capsular quasi-pneumonia isolate in Qatar is kind of very conserved. And then we look at 
uh, them. And um, in particular, the ST196, they are actually collected from different hospitals, and but they are genetically almost identical in terms of SNPs and also in terms of the composition of the AMR genes. So we, we kind of believe that there's like a nosocomial transmission among the uh, ST196 uh, capsular quasi pneumonia within Qatar, within this country. Uh, from the literature and also from the GeneBank database, we knew that like ST196 was has been reported in UK and Denmark only. There's only a couple of um, sequences or assembled genomes in the GeneBank, and they mostly contain uh, carry KBC. So uh, somehow some of these isolate when they came to the Middle East, they, they somehow pick up the NDM uh, bearing plasmid and then being circulating around uh, within the country. Um, yeah, and uh, this is one because we, we we're trying to do the long the long read sequence, but based on the short read assembly, we know that one of the contact containing all these four AMR genes, um, they are we can find con context of highly similar context also in other capsular pneumonia as well. So there's might be some sort of fragmented evidence suggesting that these um, the NDM bearing plasmid in uh, quasi-pneumonia in capsular quasi-pneumonia also being circulated to or acquired by other capsular pneumonia species. So I think uh, this is the summary of my talk. So we, uh, based on some epidemiology studies, we know that uh, OXA48 and NDM enzymes are prevalent in Qatar. And then um, uh, based on when we try to dig in and look at, concentrate on one, ST383, we find that it carry a hybrid plasmid uh, with NDM and multiple uh, virulence genes. And also it has a second plasmid bearing also 48. And then uh, I think just based on the uh, evolution of ST383, there's some sort of evolution from non-virulent species to become hypervirulent on the, on the pathway to become hypervirulent just by picking up acquisition of this kind of plasmid. So, uh, and yeah, the final note is the ST196 is circulating. It seems to be like an endemic cone in the Middle East region. And thank you, that's it, the end of my talk. Uh, so thank you, Clement. It was a really interesting data set. Unfortunately, we have no time for questions. If you have any questions for Clement, please write them in the chat and discuss them, I mean, the connection will be left open, so you can discuss while the people can take a five minute break, please, uh, because then there is Jana and then there is Olivia and we are running uh, terribly late. So, so it's a break. Thanks, okay. Clement. It was really interesting. Thanks a lot. How long the break? Um, it's uh, probably five minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, let's say 25. Let's say we restart at okay. seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Sorry. You're very I'm... kind. <laughs> Sorry. I show you the CISO. Yes, that's very nice. Uh, similar to yesterday, eh? sunny and everything. One thing, Alice, uh, for your this talk, this introduction, it was very nice. I, I liked very much this example at the beginning and everything. Uh, but next time, for next time, you should think about how to measure the, the importance of uh, point mutations versus recombination versus horizontal gene, gene transfer. You have but many example, you, this, you have you have many modelers around you that can. But uh, this think, is one of the reasons why I organize this because uh, you need also data sets because. To measure the importance, you cannot, I mean, uh, probably because I come from physics, no? But 
you cannot measure the importance if you don't have data. So you need to have data uh, in which there is both point mutations and uh, structural variation, let's call them, and then trying to match them. I mean, one thing that I'm missing and that I wanted to ask was uh, if, can, if somebody, probably you or Cornelia, who are the wisest, wisest around, can suggest me um, readings on how these things happen, on the mechanism presiding. Okay. Because, because like point mutation is something intrinsically random and intrinsically Poissonian, because there is the... Uh, the polymerase and the polymerase makes a mistake because it gets the wrong one. Mm. And this is intrinsically Poissonian. While I have no understanding of how plasmids, I mean, uh, um, the talk, the, uh, Adam's talk was really interesting on this because he probably can suggest me something because he too, I should stop the recording. We don't need to record this. Um,